Number 10, Draculina. To be clear, when we talk about heroes you've never heard of, we're more talking about those that sit on the outskirts of the superhero fandoms. So you won't find them likely on the big screen or on DC's or Marvel's main teams like the Justice League, Avengers, or the X-Men. Instead, these are heroes who come from a more humble background by comparison. Some of them may have been simply forgotten due to just how long they've been around, whereas others typically are associated with smaller or even in some cases now defined defunct publishers. Coming from the world of fellow indie hero Vampirella, Draculina is sort of Ella's adopted sister and also kind of her ex-lover or ex one night stand. There have actually been at least two different Draculinas, possibly three at this point. One is Lilith's biological daughter and the biological twin sister of Vampy who is blonde. The other one, the one I'm focusing on, who was once Vampy's lover, became obsessed with her and was eventually adopted by Lilith to become the new Draculina. If you want to learn more about her and other Vampy Jason characters, Sacred Six is a pretty cool comic that I would recommend that you check out. Or you can learn more about this version of Draculina in the 2019 Vampirella series from Dynamite. Both of those series, by the way, are by Christopher Priest. Both Draculinas go by the name Victory, although the one we're talking about here was originally named Victoria, but the two do differ in terms of appearance and, like I said, blood relation. <laughs> blood relation in this context almost becomes a vampire pun. This new Draculina isn't exactly a vampire, by the way, but is armed with a demonic ring that basically grants her power power similar to one, allowing her to accurately play the part. Draculina is currently a property of Dynamite Comics. Number 9, Tony Chu. Tony Chu is a quirky and unique character, but still is ultimately a hero. And even technically a superpower, so he would qualify as a superhero. Tony is a detective who possesses the unique power of sebopathy. Whatever he eats, except for beets, he gains in depth knowledge of. Being able to tell where all the ingredients that make it up came from, being able to taste everything about that ingested food. Tony uses this skill to basically solve murders mainly, sometimes even ingesting parts of victims or the accused, sometimes even ingesting parts of the victims or the suspects to learn more about the case and help solve it. He initially worked for the Philadelphia Police Department, but ultimately gets fired after they witness him eating part of a deceased suspect. He later is hired by the FDA. And friends, before we move on to this next spot, if you are loving this list, there are actually a lot more indie superheroes that I would love to tell you about as we dive into the world of unknown supers. So if you want to learn more, be sure to let us know by commenting below and giving this video a thumbs up. Number 8, Red Sonja. One of my favorite lesser known heroes is Red Sonja. Red Sonja comes to us from the less sci-fi, more fantasy based world of sword and sorcery. She is an extremely gifted fighter, marksman, and sword bearer. Red Sonja, the she-devil, is said to have been given her name for, well, many different reasons. One such story as to how she got her name is that she left to seek out adventure and her fortune and became a mercenary, earning the name Red because of all the blood that she spilled. Red Sonja, while not a traditional hero, pretty much always stands up to those who are cruel and corrupt, often fighting for those who who are oppressed, even against her better judgement. She has even fought death before in combat and won, allowing her to live on when she was on the brink of death. Red Sonja was once a character from the Marvel Comics wheelhouse, but currently calls Dynamite Comics her home. All right, at number seven, we've got Shaylee Moonpetal. Like a few others coming up on this list, Shaylee gets her start in Strange Academy, a community of young sorcerers and mages started by the Sorcerer Supreme, Doctor Strange. This is a great thing to see starting in March 2020 because it seems to be introducing a whole new generation of superheroes like Shaylee. Once again, she's still very young and her powers are yet to really flourish, but she is basically a hybrid between a human and a fairy. She can fly using her fairy wings and has the capacity to cast spells. She's also already able to teleport herself and nine other people at one point, although this power still doesn't come easily to her without some support from her friend Desi. Like some of the other students at the academy, Shaylee's upbringing wasn't so easy, having been barred from visiting her human father and having to grow up without his influence. But only time will tell whether this experience will hinder or further motivate Shaylee to become a powerful hero in the future. Number 6, Savage Dragon. Savage Dragon is a popular hero as far as the lesser known or indie heroes go, so if you haven't heard of him before, you might want to check him out. Initially, his origins were a mystery. All we knew was that he was a humanoid, green skinned, dragon like character who decided to fight as a police officer and hero, fighting against the criminal and mutant super freaks of Chicago. That's also in part because Savage Dragon initially had really 
really bad amnesia in the comics, so he didn't actually even remember his own origin story at the time. Savage Dragon hails from Image Comics and was originally introduced as simply Dragon before being known under the mantle of Savage Dragon. His powers include super strength and super healing. Number 5. Laura Wilson slash Persephone Laura Wilson is the main character of the Wicked and the Divine series from Image Comics. The series was created by writer Kieran Gillen and artist Jamie McKelvey. In this story, gods come to life cyclically being kind of reincarnated. This is known as the recurrence. Laura herself is obsessed with the gods and the pantheon who are all of course re-emerging at the time. She wants nothing more than to be a god herself. At least that is what she thinks she wants until her wishes kind of come true. She is revealed to be Persephone who is believed to be the final god to return during the recurrence. As Persephone, she can summon plants and vines and control them. She also seems to have some kind of control or influence over the underworld. Lori can also create fireballs and reveal to others past events, summoning visions of the past even if she was not present for those events. Number 4. Luther Strode Luther Strode is the main character in the Strange Talent of Luther Strode series, a series that hails from Image Comics. Luther ends up acquiring powers that enhance his strength, durability, speed, and combat skills after receiving a mail order exercise program known as the Hercules Method. Luther's powers, however, only create more harm than good in his life and lead to a lot of death, much of it happening as a result of his own involvement. Try as he might to try and do good with it. While not a conventional hero, Luther Luther definitely fits the bill of an anti-hero or more accurately tragic hero archetype, with everything going awry, no matter his intent. He's also someone I would personally love to see take on the hero who made our number 2 spot. Okay, at number 3 is Bridget Thor's daughter. Daughter of Thor. Okay, in the same event mentioned in the previous section, Bridget finds refuge underground alongside Sora and a few others. Bridget is unable to lift her father's hammer, so instead she works as a blacksmith for the other survivors. But when Ov or Ov, not sure how to pronounce it, the dark son of Namor calls Captain Marvel to have talks in New Atlantis, Bridget accompanies her. And thank God for that, because when things naturally go wrong, because it's Namor's son, Bridget is forced to call upon Mjolnir and succeeds this time, gaining the powers of her father Thor. Seeing as this is a newer character and storyline, there's not much more that has taken place for this character, but this is a pretty damn cool start. And after this major event that basically destroys the surface of the earth, most of the old heroes and villains alike die. So in the early 2050s, it appears that there's a new wave of heroes ready to get their own issues in the future. Pretty exciting. Number 2. Bulletproof You know Invincible, but do you know Bulletproof? Fans of the comic series likely do, but if you just became an Invincible fan via the animated series, then this isn't a character that you'd be familiar with just yet. After all, at this point we've only had one season so far, so it's very likely Bulletproof will appear in the series just not until a bit later on. Bulletproof is Zandel Rudolph. He got his powers as a result of his brother using him as basically a science experiment, as his brother Tyrone was actually obsessed with superpowers. Zandel would end up getting powers as a result of this mad science, while his brother would end up dead. Bulletproof also goes on to take up the invincible mantle at one point, filling in for Mark when he is off world. Zandel's powers are based on energy absorption, which I think is one of the strongest power sets to have personally. Bulletproof, like other heroes in the Invincible universe, Universe comes to us from Skybound, which is an imprint of Image Comics. Number 1. The Darkness The Darkness is an ancient elemental force that takes up residence in a host, granting them special powers. One of the most famous hosts that we have come to know as the Darkness is Jackie Estacado. The powers that Jackie wields are similar to what you'd expect from some kind of demonic force. They are also honestly comparable to Venom's power set from Marvel Comics, at least I see a lot of similarities there. The Darkness gives you access to a sort of mystical armor which can be summoned at will. It also grants the user a healing factor, shapeshift abilities, and through them also the ability to fly via wings that you can create. Jackie as the darkness can also create dark tendrils which he can also turn into weapons, and he can also summon entities known as darklings. While more of an anti-hero due to his methods, Jackie as Staccato is still a hero in the sense that he generally fights on the side of good. The darkness hails from Top Cow Productions. And if you do know the Witchblade, you probably know the darkness, or vice versa. Number 10. Wind Wind is the name of the main character from this self-titled series, also of course named Wind. It comes from Boom Studios and was written by James Tinian IV with art by Michael Dalyanos. 
Wind is a teenage hero who has always hidden the truth of his elven and magical heritage as a weird blood. His heritage grants him great power, power he's been hiding from his whole life in an attempt to fit in. Being made to believe that magic is dangerous and basically turns people into monsters or in some other way corrupts them. When he becomes too old to hide his pointed ears and who he is any longer, he is forced to either try and change or embrace who he really is. And in order to protect his friends against those who would hunt both him and them down, Wind ultimately embraces his magical side, unleashing powerful abilities. Wind has wings, can fly, and can communicate with forests like spirits or sprites. He also has, like many other teen heroes, the power of friendship, which usually means he ends up making friends with powerful allies. I would say if you love the world of Avatar, you might also end up falling in love with both the character Wind and his series. It reminds me of Avatar, at least, in like the best way. Number 9. Lord Fanny Lord Fanny is Hilda Morales, who was born as a boy but raised as a girl. She is a transsexual woman and one of the first trans heroes in comics. Lord Fanny was raised as a girl by her grandmother because only women in their culture could become witches and her grandmother was a powerful witch who wanted to pass on her knowledge and power to Fanny. Although Fanny herself did choose to be a girl, if that makes sense. Lord Fanny is a member of the Invisibles team and was created by writer Grant Morrison and artist Steve Yoel. The Invisibles was a comic series that existed as as part of DC's Vertigo imprint back when it was around. I miss Vertigo so much. The series began in 1994, and in issue 13, we'd learn more about Lord Fanny's origins and her very tragic backstory. Lord Fanny's such a cool character. And friends, before we move on to the next spot, if you are loving this list and you want to learn about even more cool, lesser known indie heroes, be sure to let us know by giving this video a thumbs up. Number 8, Quantum and Woody. You may have heard of Valiant's character Bloodshot, who recently got his own solo film, but what about all of their other superheroes? Quantum and Woody is a series and superhero duo from Valiant Comics. It was inspired by the superhero team up series Power Man and Iron Fist, but is a lot more bizarre. The series itself was written by Christopher Priest, with art actually by the artist who did Power Man and Iron Fist. Pretty cool. Quantum and Woody are adoptive brothers who, after years of being estranged, are brought back together when their father mysteriously dies. While trying to figure out what really happened to him, they stumble upon superpowers. The catch? They must touch their their power bands at least once every 24 hours to not only keep their powers but also keep from losing their lives as well, as they would then no longer exist if they didn't touch their band. Quantum's powers are more defense based, while Woody's are more offensive. Oh, and they also kind of have an animal sidekick, Vincent Van Goat, who is even more bizarre than he already sounds. Just trust me, I don't want to spoil anything, but Vincent Van Goat. What a goat. Number 7, Vampirella. But you can call her Vampy. Vampirella isn't a conventional hero by any means, but she definitely tries to do what's best by folks while still being a vampire from outer space, and at the same time with ties to Lilith and Hell. Overall, she's both complicated and also kind of super simple, and it's that weird blend of those two very different elements that I love about her. Vampy being an intergalactic vampire is super strong, fast, can fly because she actually has wings, and also has been shown to have access to advanced technology at times due to her ties to the planet Draculon. Vampirella is currently attached to Dynamite Comics but was originally a property of Warren Publishing. Number 6, King Mob. King Mob is the leader of the Invisibles. He was once a horror writer who wrote under the pen name Kit Morrison. As the series The Invisibles is created by Grant Morrison, Mob is believed to be sort of a fictional stand in for Morrison himself. King Mob's legal name was Gideon Starozowski, and he struggles with his alter persona, especially troubled by how violent he, as King Mob, can be. King Mob is not only a leader who wields power in that sense, because he's a leader, but also has experience with firearms and weapons, is a skilled martial artist and fighter, is psychic, can time travel, and employs the use of chaos magic. So lots of cool things that he can do. Also if you haven't read The Invisibles, it is really trippy. Go read it. If you like The Matrix, you'll probably like The Invisibles. If you like The Matrix and if you like Doom Patrol, which of course is also Grant Morrison. Not The Matrix, Doom Patrol. At number 5 is Zoe Laveau first appearing in issue 1 of Strange Academy. So far Zoe has shown abilities of necromancy and hypnosis, but still seems to have lots to learn. Her backstory is particularly tough and another brilliant bit of writing by the creators of this storyline. With a long bloodline of magicians, Zoe falls victim to depression when she struggles with her own abilities with magic. So to make up for her perceived inadequacies as a sorcerer, she turns to Gaslamp who sells wishes like drugs and her powers are increased for a time, but they don't last long and wear off, 
leading her back to gas lamp over and over and over again. I'm sure you can see the metaphor here. Basically, she becomes addicted and eventually loses her life to this habit, but is luckily resurrected when her ancestor Marie Laveau is called upon. Now she wears a necklace that keeps her appearing healthy and alive, but when it's removed, a decaying version of herself is revealed as a painful reminder of her past traumas. I think we can all see how these details can be translated to the real issues of modern young people, right? This character's story is just so full of metaphors that it's just brilliant and deserves a spot on this list. Number 4. Sludge Sludge is a hero or anti-hero who comes to us initially from Malibu comics and was created by writer Steve Gerber and artist Aaron Lepresti. Sludge was once Frank Hogue, a dirty NYPD police officer who accepted bribes in exchange for favors when it came to drug dealings. He was ordered by the crime boss he worked for, John Paul Marcello, to kill another likely dirtier cop. When Frank refused Marcello's request, Marcello had him killed instead. After being shot, a grenade went off, knocking him into a bucket of chemical waste. Who put that chemical waste there? The waste would merge with him after he was dumped into the sewers, turning him into the super heroic monstrosity Sludge. Sludge possesses a healing factor and super strength. He could also kill or mutate his opponents with just a touch. Kind of turns them into sludge. It's pretty. It's pretty dark, really. Number three, Radiant Black. Radiant Black is Nathan Burnett, or was Nathan Burnett. Nathan to start, anyways. Going to try not to spoil this series because it's one that I think we should all be reading, so I'm just gonna leave it at Nathan for now. Radiant Black is the first hero we meet in this series. In issue number one, Nathan ends up getting the powers of the Black Radiant, which basically means he has the powers of a black hole. Radiant Black can manipulate gravity and also becomes super dense with this power set. The downside for this hero is being new it means that he's pretty inexperienced in the comics thus far. However, gravity manipulation manipulation as a power set is insane, which is how he ranks so high up on this list despite his inexperience. Radiant Black hails from Image Comics, and like I said, if you have not checked out this series and gotten to know the Radiance yet, well, you definitely need to change that and you need to do so. It's like Power Rangers, but possibly cooler, and I say that having much respect and much love for Power Rangers. So that's not a snub at all, it's just like, it's really good. Number 2. Exo Manowar Valiant Comics actually has a whole stable and universe filled with supers, including this one here, Exo Manowar. Exo Manowar is actually the name of the sentient armor that is tied to our hero in this series, Arik of Dacia, a Visigoth from the 5th century AD. Arik would end up being abducted by aliens and enslaved for years before he managed to escape. Arik learned of where his captive's armory was kept and basically ended up getting there and then getting the Exo Manowar suit. He then bonded with the suit and used that advanced tech to escape his captors. However, due to interstellar travel, by the time he arrived back on Earth, it was now the 20th century, basically modern day. Eric would have to adjust to this very different world and along the way would meet other superheroes from the Valiant universe. That's right, there's not just two more, there's a whole bunch of them. Exo Manowar is a character created by writers Jim Shooter, Steve Englehart, and as well as artist Bob Layton and Barry Windsor Smith. Number 1. Black Hammer Black Hammer is Joe Weber, the title character of the Black Hammer series, written by Jeff Lemire, with artwork by the amazing Dean Ormston. The Black Hammer series was made to be completely different from other more traditional superhero comics, but if I did have to compare Black Hammer to anyone from that more conventional world, I would liken him to Thor myself. Joe Weber inherited the hammer and powers of the former Black Hammer when he died, being transported to the realm of New World as soon as he himself had picked up the fallen hammer. There he learned that he was meant to become the new Black Hammer, replacing the fallen one as Starlock's new and most powerful warrior in the fight against Starlock's evil twin, the Anti God. While being the title character, Black Hammer isn't actually the main character of this series. As we learn near the end of issue number one, Black Hammer sacrificed himself to save the world from the Anti God and keep his fellow superheroes and friends alive. But what really happened to him, and just how and why are his teammates now seemingly trapped in the timeless and kind of eerie town of Rockwood. Well, to find out, you'll have to read on, true believers. But honestly, you should just go read Black Hammer because it's pretty great. Everyone go read all the Black Hammer things. It's like a whole universe now. At number 10 is Amulet, or Fadi Fadlala. 
He's a great new addition to the Marvel Universe and a very, very sweet, innocent guy with a pretty good power set too, at least so far. His main power is his Nazar shield, which he can conjure up on command. But one of the things that makes this guy unique is that his powers are fueled by love and care. So for instance, when he shields Mrs. Marvel, he draws power from the concern of her friends to give her complete protection from harm. And these shields can also be manipulated to be used as flying platforms for him to fly around with. Originally from Michigan, Fadi moves to New Jersey to live with his grandmother and cousins who own a juice bar. I like this character and the others on this list because it seems like the writers are really doing their best to tell stories that people relate to in 2022. Having a superhero with an immigrant backstory starting in ancient Baghdad and taking us to a multicultural western city is just a really cool way of acknowledging modern reality for a lot of people. It's going to be really cool to see where Fadi's story goes in the future, but for now, in his youth, he's already got some good accolades and a pretty nifty power set. At number 9, we have the Spirit of Corruption. Now this isn't a brand new hero, but it's a new identity that Daniel Ketch has taken on in 2021. In Ghost Rider Volume 9, Issue 4, Daniel and his brother Johnny Blaze have a fight as Daniel is trying to convince his brother that his new position as King of Hell is corrupting his soul. But Blaze tries to kill him in retaliation and Ketch is sent to Hell where he's transformed into the Spirit of Corruption. This is where this entry on the list gets a bit dicey because this newfound power is pretty dark and doesn't scream heroism. But considering Daniel Ketch is a good guy at heart, I think he belongs here. And he holds on to some of his humanity even while transformed into the spirit of corruption, which suggests that he could still make sound decisions based on his good nature. Regardless, the powers he's given are extremely powerful, with superhuman strength, durability, and the use of the Blight Blade. This weapon is really cool because whoever gets stabbed with it will turn to sludge by the corruption of their past evil deeds. But if someone hasn't done anything corrupt, they recover from the blow. So he's good, right? Right? Okay, at number eight, we have Prince of Power or other one. At first glance, he may seem like a total conceited a-hole, but his backstory is actually really interesting in how he gets to this point. Basically, he is one of two sons of Regalia, Queen of Noblor, but when other one is born, his unattractive appearance and low intelligence, not my words, that's actually how the wiki describes him, leaves him in the shadows of his extremely powerful and successful brother, Magistar. And this leaves him with his name, Other One. So one day as he's sorting paper clips, which he becomes a master at, he manifests the power and attractive appearance of his brother and the power stone appears in his jelly bean bowl. He eats it by accident and basically turns into Prince of Power, with a power set that gives him superhuman strength, durability, and speed. But as a cruel trade-off, his intelligence is lowered even further. His powers are kind of bizarre too because whoever he attacks is infused with the power of the power stone he's ingested. So. Basically, he just makes his enemies more powerful. Hey, this isn't a list about the most powerful new superheroes, just the newest ones. Number seven, Josephine. More commonly referred to as Joe, Josephine is the main character and hero of the Fatal series. More commonly referred to as Joe, Josephine is the main character and hero of the Fatal series, which comes to us from Image Comics. Fatal is a supernatural noir style comic created by the brilliant team up of writer Ed Brubaker and artist Sean Phillips. Seriously, I love these two together. Some might argue that Joe isn't really a hero as she's, well, she's a little bit selfish, but in focusing on uncovering the mysteries of her own power and in trying to save herself, she does inevitably save others in the long run, at least. There are a lot of people that end up being sacrificed along the way in order for Joe to stand a chance in defeating her enemies in the end. And also there are just straight up people being sacrificed along the way by her enemies who are attempting to track her down. So yeah, she, she kind of also gets a lot of people killed, but you know. It's not her fault. Joe's powers allow her to control all men who gaze upon her, with them being irresistibly attracted to her no matter who they are and no matter if she wants to influence them or not. Unless of course they are able to protect themselves against her influence with extremely powerful magic, which we only see from a couple characters really in the series. In other words, her power is pretty freaking strong. The only downside here, which is kind of the crux of it all, is that she can't fully control her powers. That is, she can't turn them off when she wants to, which ends up causing a lot of problems for Joe along the way, but I won't spoil any of that. Anyways, if you haven't read Fatal, it's now, I think, we're, it's gonna be 10 years old soon, so go and read it, hurry up. Came out, I think, in 2012. 
that's when it started. At number six, we've got Emily Bright. Another member of the Strange Academy, Emily might have the best grasp of her powers out of anyone at the school. Since she was a young girl, she's been able to manipulate magic on command. And when she's invited by Doctor Strange to the Academy, she only gets more confident with her powers. She's capable of healing, energy blasts, she's beginning to master the use of the Eye of Agamotto which allows her to perceive the ties of multiple worlds all at once, and she can multiply living creatures, which could be a good start to a pretty powerful and unique power set. It'll be interesting to see where Emily's abilities go from here, as well as the relationships she'll make at Strange Academy. Number 5, Witchblade. Witchblade is a hero who comes from Top Cow Productions. Mainly we've known Witchblade as Sarah Pizzini, but the Witchblade has belonged to many other powerful women throughout the years. The Witchblade is an ancient mystical artifact that typically binds itself to a host who can then wield and use its powers at will. It can be more or less powerful depending on the host, but in this case since Sarah is one of the most well known hosts of the Witchblade, we're gonna basically base the ranking on her abilities. The Witchblade can be used to summon mystical armor which can cover the entirety of its host's body, though typically most are not skilled enough to actually summon that much armor and instead are usually only covered in little pieces of armor as a Result. Hence why you see that witch blade art and she's like, not really covered in much. This armor grants the wearer invulnerability, but even if its host is harmed, it also grants the power to heal. Aside from creating armor, the witch blade can also be used to create weapons on the fly. It also increases its host's strength and endurance. Sarah herself was also a trained NYPD detective prior to becoming the host for the witch blade, so she also brings her skills as an officer and detective to the table. At number four is Sora, aka the wolf. Daughter to Psylocke and Forge, Sora first appears in Captain Marvel Volume 10, Issue 22, when the world has become inhabitable, at least on the surface level, due to lethal levels of radiation. Sora lives with a group of other survivors of this nuclear event in an underground facility underneath New York City. And only when Captain Marvel restarts the sun are they able to start re emerging to the surface of the Earth. Some of Sora's powers include the summoning of psionic weapons and telepathy. She's also known to be a genius, which comes in handy, especially when needing to be resourceful in the position she finds herself in. It's really cool to see new characters like this being introduced in 2022. And not only are we seeing new characters, but new events and storylines that seem to be birthing whole droves of heroes at once. We're really excited to see where Sora's storyline goes, and we hope that this new sun works properly. Number 3, Radiant Yellow. We don't know that much about the newest Radiants, but we do know that they seem interested in protecting innocent people from whatever crazy craziness is currently going on. Okay, hard to keep talking about all of this Radiant Black series without spoiling anything, but I'm once again, I'm gonna I'm try my best. Radiant Yellow appears to be an older gentleman, and as far as I know, we don't really know his name yet. What we do know is that each Radiant seems to have their own power set. At least that's what we're being led to believe by the story and the imagery used. It hasn't exactly all been laid out yet, which is honestly kind of what makes this series so much fun. There's so much we don't know. The mystery of it all. Radiant Yellow, however, seems to have powers based in perhaps light manipulation. To me, that's what it looks like the force blasts that they emit are based in. And it also looks to me like they can perhaps manipulate light to create illusions. That's just based on the imagery that's surrounding them in the comics. Like the other Radiants, Yellow isn't too experienced and doesn't seem to understand the full extent of their powers just yet. Radiant Yellow comes to us from the Radiant Black series, which belongs to Image Comics and is written by Kyle Higgins, who yes, was also the initial writer of the Power Ranger series. And it was also created by artist Marcelo Costa. At number two, we have Werewolf by Night, or Jake Gomez, an indigenous hero with the ability to transform into a werewolf on command without the need for moonlight. What makes this character cool and adds some modernity to his abilities is that he can only control his powers when he's listening to a playlist made by his cousin Molly. I think it's a really cool angle to have a young character's powers governed by their emotions and even their favorite music because it speaks to the reality of a young person's experience in the modern day. I think it also speaks to today's culture in that many young people can sometimes fall victim to their emotions, giving the werewolf power a bit of a metaphorical quality to it. On top of this, the first real victim that Jake faces is the Life Pharmaceutical Organization, who have captured some of the tribal people from Hopi Reservation in the Painted Desert. So it's a pretty good commentary on modern issues if you ask me. First appearing in 2022's Werewolf by Night Volume 3, Issue Number 1, 
Jake is just starting his journey as a new Marvel hero, and we're very excited to see where this character goes next. At number one, we have Doctor Multiverse, or Maya Kamara from Earth 8, who made her debut as recently as January 2022, so only three months ago, as of posting this video. She first appears in Justice League Incarnate number one, and I'm putting her at number one because I feel like this hero has the biggest potential out of all of them on the list. Her powers and backstory are really cool, and her direct association to everything multiverse just screams mainstream hit to me. I mean, her powers are crazy. She can basically track down and transport herself to the immediate position of anyone she's ever interacted with wherever they are in the multiverse. She can also withstand explosions at point blank range without being hurt and can see variants and alternate versions of people from different realities and recognize any person's identity and home universe just by glancing at them. She's basically a god with powers like that. And it's cool to be here for her big debut in 2022.